What's up everybody, and today we're going to be looking at Encoda, a cyberpunk point and click game releasing today from the developers at Chaos Monger Studios. You play as Tina, a nine year old orphan with her nanny bot Sam53, living in 2062 Neo Berlin, a dark megalopolis controlled by major corporations and where many of the inhabitants spend most of their time and addicted to virtual space, a VR world to help them escape from the terrible realities they all live. Tina and Sam are just trying to survive until they find a hidden message encrypted into Sam's hard drive, one video of her father, needing her to set out on a quest to save the city and its people. Encoda, first and foremost, is your classic point-and-click adventure game, with finding objects and solving puzzles by using the items or combining them. There can be some head stumpers throughout your journey. If you play on the easy difficulty like I did, you can ask Sam for hints, but don't think that they're always going to be helpful. Through my playthrough though, I really, I mean I did, I needed at least a minimum of 20 hints to figure things out. Now this could be just because I haven't played a classic point and click game in a few years. I think it was probably, I don't know, 2017 when I uh, went back and played Day of the Tentacle. But this does have a lot of those same classic elements from the old school point and click LucasArts games. Another element to this one that makes it a little unique is being able to switch between Tina and Sam, where Tina can do some of the smaller things and Sam is needed to do a lot of the heavy lifting, and it's really nice to shake it up a little bit and bring the two characters into the fold. The downside that I was really not a fan of was the size of certain sections of the map. Going through the game, you find areas that are just a little bit larger than what you can see on your screen, that kind of when you get closer to the edge, the camera slightly pans. This really, really messed me up in the beginning because I was lost. I didn't know what was going on and I couldn't find the items I needed till I noticed that there was just a little sliver of an area that I couldn't see and finally found. Also, in tight, narrow hallways, you have to do a lot of extra clicking to get down to the hall because the hall's not fully in frame. Instead, doing the camera shift leading to Tina doing a lot of stop and go motions instead of just going to the end of the hall. It wouldn't have been an issue if it, it kind of followed Tina fluidly, but it's just slower than what she is and it leads her to do a lot of stop and go motions. Story-wise, it's nice. Not the greatest I've seen, but the overall plot has some nice dips and curves into it. The ending was a nice touch to the game, but it was also kind of expected. It's not going to invoke a lot of feeling from you, but it delivers a decent world building, and more world building if you kind of talk to the inhabitants of Neo Berlin, giving their stories and struggles. The backstories of some of these individuals are well detailed, and they give the characters life, but I do kind of wish that they would have given a little bit more story behind the city. But I guess, it really, if you look at the context of the game, who's going to be talking about the city to a nine-year-old girl? Graphically, it has its highs and its lows for me. The landscape and background remind me of an updated Monkey Island or point-and-click Star Trek game with well-detailed and kind of on some occasions almost hand-painted look in some areas. Overall, the world around the characters looks honestly amazing. The characters are where I have my negatives. They look plastic and honestly remind me of a mid-2000s cheap straight-to-DVD 3D animation movie that like rips off the bigger animation companies, kind of like Cure the Brave. It's just a stark difference that is really jarring to me. On the positive side though, the sound is a plus in this game, with great sound effects and music that gives great feeling to the game, as long as you don't look into Cure's eyes. Encoda is not a bad game, but it's not a great game. The mechanics, to me, are pretty solid. Maybe some tweaks need to be made, but nothing game-breaking. The story is what kind of made me think less of this game. It just feels like it was missing something. I don't know what that something is, but I didn't feel like it was complete. The character design, I can see that getting to people, but I was able to overlook it in about an hour because I was just truly enamored by the environments. Encoda, I think, is for people who love a classic point-and-click game, that difficulty and accomplishment of finding the solutions. The negatives in that aspect are honestly going to disappear. But if you're somebody who dabbles in this genre, you may not be so inclined to look away from the flaws. But that decision's up to you. I've had head-splitting fun, and if this game really does look interesting to you, it's about 5 to 8 plus hours of gameplay depending on how often you struggle because 
It took me about eight hours, and they haven't set the price of the game during the recording of this video, but I believe it's probably going to be anywhere between $20 to $30 range, which can be a steep price for people that are unsure of this game. But if you still do want to take a look at it, the link for the Steam page will be down in the description, as well as a link to the Discord if you guys want to come chat. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, lets me know if I'm doing something right, and like always guys, I'll see you in the next video, and have fun.